Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Sexton, and I'm your instructor for Biology 2401. I will be your instructor for both lecture and lab. So this video is just a short introduction to the class. Uh, I want to show you how to use eCampus, where to find things, and so on. So let's go to eCampus. So if you sign into eCampus, this is the page that you're going to see. And so when you go to the top of the page, you're going to see tabs. First one is Dallas College. That's where you'll sign in. And then it says Courses. If you click on Courses, it'll take you to the list of all of your courses that you're enrolled in. Some of them may say not currently available, but that's up to your instructor. But if you go to the course that you're enrolled in, our course, and click on it, then you will get to this page. And when you get to this page, uh, if you look over to the left, you're going to see a bunch of different tabs, a bunch of different buttons. They're organized. If you look at it, first there's a group called Course Information. And so here's Course Information. Under there, you'll find Start Here. You'll find Contact Information, Course Information, Learning Materials. You'll also find an Announcements page. If you go to the next section, you'll say PowerPoints and Videos. And this is where the lecture PowerPoints and Videos will be located and the lab PowerPoints and Videos. And then if you come down a little further, it'll say Study Resources. And you'll see a button that says Checklist for Lab. You'll see another button that says Worksheets. Another button that says Study Questions for Lecture and Lab. And then Tools. And finally, Help. And then the last section says assessments. And this is where you're going to go to take any kind of quiz or exam or test or anything like that. If you look here, you'll see quizzes. If you click on quizzes, uh, it'll take you to where the quizzes are, both lecture and lab. And you'll see one that says exams. If you click on it, it'll take you to the exams, lecture and lab. Case studies, and we'll talk about case studies a little bit more in a minute, but that's where you'll find that. And then the very last button says My Grades. And so if you want to know your grades, uh, you click on this and it'll take you to a page that shows all of your grades. So let's take a look at some of this. So if we click Contact Information, it's going to take you to here. And this is where you're going to find My Contact Information. And so it has my office phone and office uh, at North Lake, but remember we're completely online. And so the best and really the only way to get in touch with me right now is through email, but you can see my email address. I check my email every single day. And so I will get back to you within 24 hours. If you come down to course information, it's going to see, you'll see some folders and the first one says syllabus. And if you click on the syllabus, it'll take you to the syllabus. And so you may have to download it onto a file uh, uh, and save it, but then it'll open. And so let's take a look at it. It looks like this. So here's the syllabus. And so if you look at it, it has my name and email address. It has the description of the course. It has the course objectives. It also has uh, the required materials. And we'll talk about those a little bit more later on. And then it tells you about the number of exams, the case study, quizzes, the lab, and so on. The next thing is there's a, a place for you to, if you want to, figure out your grade. Um, eCampus will not be figuring out your grade for you. And so in order to do that, you have to use this formula here. And then finally, if you come down a little further, you'll see the lecture. lecture topics, which direct uh, the order they're going to go in, when we will have exams, the lab topics, same thing. The last thing on here is a set of questions that can be used for study. So these are open-ended questions. And so if you can answer these questions, even though your test is not open-ended, you'll be able to answer the questions on the test. So for example, what is anatomy? You should be able in a few sentences to tell me what anatomy is. What is physiology? 
in a few sentences, you should be able to tell me what physiology is, and then how are they different, and why should we study them together? And if you go down here, you'll see a bunch of these questions. So that's what the syllabus looks like. If you come down a little further, you'll see learning materials. Learning materials, this is where you're going to go to get your lab book. And so it'll look something like this. Now, you won't see all of this, but you'll see these things here. And you'll see this button where it says learning materials include ed ebook. And so when you click on that, it's going to take you to the book. It has to launch. But here's our, our lab book. And if you click start reading, what it's going to do is open the book for you. And then you can, just like any ebook, you can navigate through it. Um, you can go page by page by page, but if you go to the table of contents, you'll be able to just click on the chapter that you want to go to. So if we get to the table of contents, and we click on a chapter, table. Let's say we're going to look at the human body, but we're only interested in, in identifying organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Well, it's going to go to that section. And so this is the best and easiest way for you to, to learn the lab. Now, there are going to be PowerPoints and videos that go along with it, but your lab book should be your primary source. You also notice that every so often you'll have these review questions to help you understand and keep up with what's going on so that you, you are actually paying attention to the correct things. If we go a little bit further down, you're going to get to uh, the PowerPoint. So if we click on the lecture PowerPoints and videos, you'll see a folder that says lecture PowerPoints. And then it's organized by chapter. Now, you won't see all of these all the time because they're going to come out one at a time or two at a time, depending on, on the situation. Uh, and they will come out as we need them. But when you click on them, you'll get PowerPoints. You'll also get links to the um, videos. And you can save these. You can just open them. You can do it however you want to. Same thing is true for lab PowerPoints. If you click on the lab PowerPoints and videos, you'll also get those PowerPoints as well. And again, if you open them, you can save them if you want to, uh, or you can just open them directly. If you come down to study resources, what you're going to see are some things like checklists. Checklists tell you what you need to know for each exam. Now, these are for lab only. So for lab, for exam one, there's a checklist. And there may be more than one checklist, but they are exactly what you think they are. They're lists of things that you need to know. If it's not on a checklist, you're not responsible for it. If you come a little further down, you'll get to worksheets. I haven't added any worksheets in here yet, but I will. And then I'm also going to put the study questions for lecture and lab, not only on the syllabus, but you can also find them in this um, tab. Another place is here where there's practice lab practicals. Now, this is not my website, but if you go to this website, you can have a lot of practice. And so uh, if we say back to where we were talking about the, the regions and cavities and so on, these are the names. And so if you're trying to figure out this body part, whatever it is, once you answer it, uh, you can check your answer. So if we go to the red arrow, the answer for that is digital. If we go to the green arrow, the answer to that is plantar. Come on down. And you can see exactly how each of these is, is used. It's a great place to go for practice.
Let's take a look at the syllabus in a little more detail. So, remember this is human anatomy and physiology, and this is part one. So basically, we're just going to be doing the first half of the book. And so when you look at the book, we just took the first half, and that's where the course comes from. It is an online book, so which means that you're going to have to spend a lot of time with your computer. You can print it, of course, but you're going to need to spend a lot of time on your own because this is an online independent learning class. But I will always be available by email for questions. I will also hold um, office hours three days a week. I'll let you know what days those are going to be, but you can come in and it'll be a, what's called collaborate. We'll use it. And it's like a face-to-face, -face, sort of like Zoom or something. And I can also use PowerPoints in it and also use a whiteboard. Again, you're going to need some materials. Materials you're going to need are a textbook and a lab book. And of course, you're going to need a good internet connection. So if we look at the textbook, the textbook is an online book and you can find it here. It's openstaxcollege.org. When you go there, there are a bunch of books there, not just ours. So you have to make sure that you pick the right book. This is what our book looks like. It's called Anatomy and Physiology. It's a free book. And so it's included in your tuition. If you don't like that book and you'd rather have a book that you can hold in your hands, you can get any book that you like as long as it's fairly current. So you can pick any human anatomy and physiology textbook. Make sure you get a college level one that you like. So you can get these off Amazon. You can get them from a Libris or Chegg or lots and lots of different places. You buy a used one, they don't cost very much. So you don't need the latest edition. If you get an edition that's two or three or even four editions earlier, it probably will be just fine. At least you can use it as a supplement to the free online book. You're also going to need a lab book. Remember, this is also included in your tuition. And so this is that book. Remember how to get there. Uh, we went to the uh, tab, clicked on it. Make sure it's Mary Eben Smith. Of course, it won't take you anywhere else. But again, it's also free. It's included in your tuition. Remember, this is found under learning materials. Let's talk a little bit about grading. That's probably all you're really interested in anyway. So with grading, your grades come from three different areas. There are quizzes. Quizzes are worth 25% of your final grade. There are lab exams. Lab exams are worth also 25% of your final exam or final grade. And then there are lecture exams and a case study, and those comprise the other 50% of your grade. So let's talk about quizzes. We're going to have a bunch of quizzes. I don't know exactly how many, but several of them. Typically, there's a quiz basically every single day. Sometimes there's more than one quiz because sometimes there's a quiz both in lecture and in lab. But all the quizzes are exactly the same. There are 15 multiple choice questions. They could be matching or labeling, something like that. I'll have an example of how to take one and what they look like uh, also in this same folder. You get one attempt at the exam. They're open book and open note. You, can use, you don't have to use a lockdown browser. You don't have to uh, use a proctor, nothing like that. They're one attempt, but they're timed. They're timed so that even though they're open book and open note, you don't have too much time to look up things. You get 18 minutes to complete those 15 questions. So look at lecture exams. So lecture exams, there are three of these. 
The good thing about lecture exams is you get two attempts to take the exam. So if you want to use the first attempt as a practice, just to get to know what the exam is covering, you're perfectly welcome to do that. The higher of the two grades is the grade that's going to be used in grade calculation. Lecture exams are 50 multiple choice matching labeling type questions. You'll take those on the computer. They're also open book and open note, but also they're timed. You'll get 60 minutes to do those 50 questions. Once they open, they will stay open for the rest of the semester. So you don't have to take them any specific time. Also, remember you get two attempts. So you don't have to do the two attempts in the same day. You can take a couple of days to study after you figure out what's on the exam. Now the exams come from pools of questions and there are over 300 questions in each pool which means that the likelihood of you getting the exact same exam twice is very, very low. We'll also have a case study. A case study basically is a situation. So someone wakes up, they feel sick, they have these symptoms, they need to go to the doctor, they need to go to the hospital. And it's your job to figure out what is wrong with this person. And then you won't be doing it by yourself. You'll sort of be led through the case study. You can use any resource that you want. You can use the internet. You can use it. If you work with a doctor, you can ask them. You can get help from your friends, whatever you want. You do not have to cite resources. The one thing is you must not plagiarize. You must not copy and paste. If you do that, you will fail. This will be turned in to turnitin.com. And what it does is it looks for strings of words. And so even if you accidentally string the words together the same way, it's going to pick it up. Now, of course, it's up to me to decide whether or not you actually did plagiarize. But I'm very picky about this, so please don't test it. Case studies are equal to a lecture grade exam. So... Remember, the lecture part is three lecture tests and one case study, and that's equal to 50% of your total grade. They're also, again, open book, open a note. You're going to take it at home. Once they open, they will remain open for the rest of the semester. They're not timed. You have as much time to work on them as you want, days. You can spend as much time as you want. The only thing is, once again, please don't plagiarize. Let's look at lab exams. So lab exams, there are three of these as well. And so remember, with just like with lecture exams, you had two attempts. You also have two attempts at each lab exam. So just like with a lecture exam, if you want to use the first attempt as a practice, you're welcome to do so. And you come back and take it again, you'll do much better. The highest grade, whichever one that is, is the one that will be used in grade calculations. Lab exams are 25 questions, and they're multiple choice, they're matching, they're labeling. They're also open book and open note. So I actually encourage you to make yourself sort of a little cheat sheet, a little worksheet that you can use. Now, you won't have an unlimited amount of time, and so that's why you need to be efficient. They're going to be taking at home, at your own computer, at your own convenience. Once they open, they'll stay open the whole semester. But again, just like lecture exams, they're timed. You have exactly the same amount of time per question that you do for lecture exams. So remember lecture exams, you had 50 multiple choice questions and you had 60 minutes. Here you have 25 multiple choice questions and you have 30 minutes. If you then, we're going to do grading and we're going to take, remember, each of these is worth a percent of your grade. So the average of all your quizzes, and I dropped the lowest two, is 25%. The average of your lab exams. 
Remember, it's the higher of your two attempts. It's 25%. And then the lecture exams and case study, the average of that is 50%. Remember, you also get to take the lecture exams twice, and the higher grade is recorded. And so here is how you determine your final grade. This is also in the syllabus, so you can always go back and look at it. So that's the course. I hope that you understood everything. I hope that it met with your satisfaction. If you have any questions, please email. Good luck. I'll see you throughout the semester.